You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's ready for (laughs) the first week of the offseason. It is Thirsty Thursday as we get ready, of course, um, for this offseason. The offseason, which really... Isn't much of an offseason with yesterday the Dallas Cowboys hiring Mike Zimmer. And, you know, I actually feel good about this. And this is where I have to be careful. I have to be careful because what always happens is we get mad. We throw a tensor tantrum. We we get mad at Jerry Jones and the Cowboys and the players. And we want to trade everybody. And then something happens. And then all of a sudden, we start forgetting about all the things that have happened before, and then we start getting hopeful. And I am one of those people that end up selling all that hope, and I've got to be careful that I don't fall into the trap again. But you have to at least say, okay, Mike Zimmer is at least a guy who's been there, who's been there with the Cowboys when they were great, who has worked with some incredible players and had some great defenses and, and, and success. And maybe just the guy that we need um, right now because, you know, we sit here and we look and we say we are getting underperformances by the players and underperformances by the front office. We need to understand that we can't just put a Band-Aid on a bleeding artery. And typically, that's been the Cowboys thing. By saying things like, we believe in our guys, even when your guys aren't linebackers, you believe that your guys can just fill in and do the job, is not a winning philosophy. And this is where, knowing that we have a problem at linebacker, knowing that we're having some problems at the defensive line and knowing where our strengths are, our secondary, getting a guy like Mike Zimmer who can use those secondary players in that man-to-man coverage as well as understand and say, hello, we need to get some linebackers as well as putting foots in asses. Here's what I loved hearing about. Um, Mike Zimmer, one of the quotes from yesterday, uh, press conference. We got to get the communications down first, the technique down second, and then we got to figure out where the personnel is and where to put them in the right place, get them coached up, and then let them go. At the end of the day, it's about the players, uh, what the players can do. We can be the smartest guys in the world, But if the players can't do what we're asking them, then we're not very smart. I love that. And that's where I think that the players are about to get a reality check and end up having to put in a lot more work than what they've had to. You know, Emmett Smith has been right. The guys on this team, and I've said it before, in fact, all of us, you know, when people tell us we're trash, You know, we say we got five rings. And then most people don't know anything about the people that actually made the five rings. The guys up here, you know, like Tony Dorsett and things and Bob Lilly's and stuff. They don't know anything about those guys. But they will tout and scream, we got five rings. In the same way, the players. Hey, we them boys, man. You know, we, we, we the Dallas Cowboys. So, you know, bow down. Ain't nobody bowing down to you. You got to put in the work to be up there with the Tony Dorsets and the Bob Lillies. So I'm happy that that may be the beginning of hopefully Camp Cupcake and getting these guys together. Now, for me, here is the biggest key to me 
and one of the shortcomings of the Dallas Cowboys. I don't understand why it always is they're the last ones to make a decision. This is their tragic flaw, if you ask me. Because, you know, you can mess up. You can mess up. I, I get it. You can mess up. But if you're going to mess up, don't take forever to mess up. The Cowboys, here's what you got to understand right now. Right now. There are so few OTAs, minicamp practices, training camp practices. It's not two-a-days. You can't bring in guys in the middle of training camp knowing that you're going to have two-a-days to get them up to speed. You can't bring guys in the middle of the season and think they're going to make an impact because they don't practice. Today's football is really about the off-season. The off-season, getting guys here sooner than later will enable you to get them up to speed with what you are doing and on the same page. In football, you can have 10 guys do the right thing and play the play perfectly, but one guy can screw the pooch. One holding call, one stupid running into the kicker, one guy out of position that leaves a hole, one guy who drops a pass. Every single one of those guys, those 11 guys on the field at one time, have to, have to be on the same page, doing the same thing, doing their assignments to succeed. And if you have a hole in your roster like linebacker and you wait until training camp to bring in a guy from a different system who is recovering from injury, you are doing your team malpractice. I don't need to sign guys as a bargain because they're injured. I need guys who can play right now, and I need them there as soon as possible. When the off-season workouts begin, I want them in the building. I want them there to start working out to get to know the guys in the locker room. To start getting used to Mike Zimmer putting foots in asses. To start learning the terminology. Because now, things are going to change. You had Dan Quinn's system. You were a 3-4. You're going to be kind of transitioning to a 4-3. You're going to have a lot to learn. Now, the Cowboys, first couple of weeks of free agency, we're not going to bother because it's too much money. We're going to wait. We're going to wait till training camp to get guys in here. No, you cannot do that. If you want to pay Mike Zimmer to do a job, then do not handicap him. And until they realize, you know what? We're going to have to take some risk. And hearing Stephen Jones saying when Jerry's gone, they'll take less risk. I'm trying to understand what risk they're taking. What risk are we taking? Since 2012, you could say Brandon Carr was the biggest free agent signing that they've had. Amari Cooper was the biggest trade that they made. You have to then look at moves like Greg Hardy. That's really it. That's the list. I mean, you could say Brandon Cooks and, and Gallimore, but those are fifth-round picks. They're good players, and maybe they'll end up paying major dividends. And I'm not trying to poo-poo those. Those were good ones. But when you look at other teams that are saying, we need more firepower, we need run, more run stoppers, we need to make more moves, the Cowboys fail by comparison. All of the moves I just listed are what teams are doing in one year. To try and get better. San Francisco took a flyer on Randy Gregory as well as Chase Young. After signing Hargrave in the offseason and getting Christian McCaffrey the year before. Where have you seen the Cowboys do anything like that to try and really get ahead? This is where we have to say if we are all in to try and win this. 
if we are saying, let's get this thing done, let's go ahead and get it done. Um, this morning, it was kind of interesting. Um, I saw headlines from the Dallas Morning News, and the title was, Cowboys have a social media issue to address. Can Mike Zimmer be part of the solution? Well, I will say, winning cures all. And if you go through and you read the article, it's a great article and things, and they talk about, of course, uh, C.D. Lamb's mom basically saying, Dak ain't it, and C.D., like to see you playing with C.J. Stroud and stuff. Uh, it talks about uh, Terrence Parsons, you know, saying, you know, get your bag and everything else. And, um, of course, I don't think it mentions Tad, but you can also put Tad in there saying, I would love to get Dak away from Dallas. And they're talking about the social media aspect of the Cowboys having all this negativity that's coming at them. Now, mind you, the Cowboys aren't the only ones. Apparently, this is the new thing because we've heard um, Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad go off before on the Cleveland Browns and now on the Baltimore Ravens. And now we're hearing Brandon Ayuk going off on San Francisco along with his girlfriend and his brother as well. Basically, the whole family is at war with San Francisco. Um, although some people will say the same thing kind of happened with Debo and maybe he's taking a page out of his book and just working on getting that big deal. Maybe that's the way it goes. But social media is an issue um, as far as PR goes. And I dare say, and I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to take credit for this, but I dare say that even people like me and law and everybody else, that this negative swell, that we are closer to the fans or we are fans, and that for us to be pounding the Cowboys constantly, that that's part of that social media issue that they get. This is a gauge that you can look at and say, we as a fans are not happy. And I dare say, in doing this, uh, doing YouTube since 2016, really beginning to catch traction and things, that this is about as angry as I've seen this team, this fan base. Um, even with Jason Garrett, this is about the worst. And for once... I think more so, I mean, everybody always points at Dak. You know, that's the easy thing to go. But more and more people are pointing towards Jerry and Stephen Jones as the culprits of the problems that exist. People are beginning, some people are, are beginning to understand that because of not just social media, but regular media that's putting out there that you can't go into a season and think you're a Super Bowl contender without linebackers. Say what you will about Dak, but your defense wasn't anywhere near what San Francisco's was in the Super Bowl against the best quarterback in football, future Hall of Famer Pat Mahomes, and their coach got fired. You can't look at what you were getting from Fred Warner and Greenlaw from the linebacker play and say the Cowboys are equal to that. You can't look at what they get from their front line of um, Hargrave, Armstead, Chase Young, Randy Gregory, and um, Nick Bosa and say that that's equal to the Cowboys. Some of that is players checking out. I will give you that. Not having confidence or tired. And that's the coach's side of it. But the other side of it is, is you've got to have the dogs in the fight too. So as Mike Zimmer put it, we can teach everything we want, but if we ain't got the players there or the players don't understand it, it's not going to be successful. So let's check out my buddies at ESPN this morning. This roster, build out this team and see where you can go. Build I'm out with the that. Team. And then here's your old team as our resident former Cowboy. Mike Zimmer is back in Dallas as the defensive coordinator. Was that the right choice? I love Mike Zimmer. And, and yes, from a coaching standpoint, from how good he's called defenses, 
My only pause and the reason why I'm mad on this G is because I want to see what the front office is going to do as far as building a roster defensively and having what it takes to actually give Mike Zimmer all the pieces that's needed in order to have success. That's my issue. I talked about this a couple of days ago. People were like, you're not excited about Mike Zimmer. It has nothing to do with that. I want to be excited about what the Cowboys do at free agency as far as building a spine on their defense. This team last year, and I'm going to say it because you heard me say it a hundred times, this, Nash, this team in the National Football League that was trying to win a Super Bowl played football without a linebacker. There you go. Without Think about that. Think about the teams we just saw play in the playoffs. Bolton, Chanel, Gay for the Kansas City Chiefs, Werner, unfortunately lost Dre Greenlaw, Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen. Look at the teams that ended up having a tremendous amount of success. That part was missing. You bring in a new defense coordinator. If you don't have linebackers, I don't give a damn who he is. There you, you go. You ain't going to look like a good one. <laughs> well, Zimmer was actually in Dallas the last time that team won a Super Bowl. And so, of course, was Emmitt Smith, the Cowboys legend. And now with Zimmer back again, Emmitt Smith has a lot to say. I want to read you some quotes from the legendary Emmitt Smith, as beloved a former Cowboy as there is. He said, I'm tired of being sold on what the Cowboys could be. I'm tired. Amen. I've had enough of it because I'm more about what the Cowboys really are and who we really are and who we were. Nobody wants to fight no more. No one wants to fight hard anymore. They want to say, oh, we are the Cowboys. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. See me on my podcast. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm everything without doing everything. And everybody's patting them on the back. People want to give them so much without doing nothing. And what they're living off of is what happened in the past, not what's going down right now. We are delighted to, as usual, uh, mm. borrow Chris mm. Canty from Unsportsmanlike mm. on ESPN Radio just for this conversation. <laughs> what do you think of what Emmett said, big fella? Well, Emmett's tired, and I guess it's ironic because he's got something to Cowboy with the Cowboys team this year because according to Demarcus Lawrence, who was on first take last year from the Super Bowl, the Cowboys were too tired and too burnt out to put up a fight against the Green Bay Packers in the playoffs. Yeah. And that's the part to me that's mm -hmm. the biggest issue down there in Dallas. I hear what Marcus is talking about as far as the overall talent on the roster, but by far the bigger issue is the culture down there in Big D. And Mike Zimmer is going to go a long ways to being able to help that out. Like, Mike Zimmer is a no-nonsense type of coach. He's off of that Bill Parcells coaching tree. He's going to bring the, the requisite things that you need a DC to do. He's got versatility in his scheme, whether it's 3-4, 4-3. He mixes it up with zone and man. You're not going to get a beat on him that way. But I think the most important thing mm -hmm. is he's going to be no-nonsense. He's going to coach these guys hard, and from what it sounds like, that's something that's needed in Dallas. Absolutely. And, and you know, Lewis, you and I were talking about Emmett's comments earlier this morning, and basically what, 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 what you were telling me he's saying is these Cowboys are still living off of what his Cowboys did a generation ago. There is absolutely no doubt. That's what he's saying. Y'all are all getting paid and having podcasts and – you know, getting put on GQ Sport Instagram page with your yeah. luggage and stuff, and Hardly you're walking out the hotel, getting on the plane and stuff. You're getting all this attention off of the work that I did, off of the work that the playmaker did, off the work that Eric Williams did, off of the work that Darren Woodson did, off mm. of the work that Troy Aikman did. Because yeah. I can tell you this, those teams, those teams weren't having it. I played against those teams. When they came out on the field, it wasn't like they, they weren't just trying to beat you. They were trying to, like, like they were trying. I don't even want to say they were trying to embarrass you. They were trying to punk you for three hours. And it was very, very evident. They played with a much different resolve, a mm -hmm. much different competitive temperament. And they did it week after week after week. And Emmett Smith was right at the forefront. You want to talk about one of the toughest players when we talk about toughness. You want to talk about the toughest players in the history in the history of the National Football League, Emmitt Smith played, I believe he played a playoff. Was it a playoff game against the Giants? Playoff? Where his shoulder was separated. Yep. Yep. And mm -hmm. Jimmy Johnson kept giving it to him. And he kept giving it to him on the old school artificial turf. And he's getting dumped play after play. And you see him walking back to the huddle and they give it to him again. And again, and again, and again. And Emmitt Smith is saying, until somebody down there shows up like I showed up, I don't want to hear none of it. Amen. Tell me how good I am. Check out my Instagram posts. We'll, we'll leave it right there. But that, 
I had to play that again because toughness, that's it. The, the will to win. It's you or me. It is do or die. And I hope that Mike Zimmer can instill that into the players. And I hope that the Cowboys start working on this fatal flaw of always waiting till it's too late. They wait too late on getting contracts and everything. You can see how many times it's cost them because they have taken their own sweet time to make a contract. You can see how many times they've waited to try and get players until everybody has gone off the list. And waiting, the players don't have time to get up to speed. This must change if we are going to go where we want to go. All right, good people, I appreciate you, and peace. You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. <laughs>